Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadratics. So we're told here that a parabola has an axis of symmetry at x is equal to negative two, a maximum value of five, and an x-intercept at negative nine. And given those characteristics, we have to find the other x-intercept and then also the y-intercept. So pretty cool question, unique. We've done questions like this before, this one is gonna have a unique set of characteristics that are given. And when you get a question like this, what I recommend is taking the characteristics and graphing it if possible, putting them on a graph so you visually see what's going on before getting into the algebra. So we're told a parabola has an axis of symmetry at negative two. Now, what is an axis of symmetry? It's the vertical line that takes a parabola and cuts it in half. It also represents the x value of the vertex, whether it's a parabola that opens down or it's a parabola that opens up. That axis of symmetry, which in this case is negative two, is gonna represent the x value of the vertex. So that's gonna be over here. So let's just put the negative two there for now. We're also told that the parabola has a maximum value of five. And a maximum value means what? Well, that's gonna be the y value of the vertex, right? And it's gonna be a parabola that opens down because we're told it's a maximum value. If it was a minimum value, then it would still be the y value of the vertex, but it would be a parabola that's opening up, right? If it had a minimum value. So we're dealing with this kind of parabola here. So we know that we got negative two, we got five. This here is gonna be the maximum point. That's gonna be the vertex. We got the y value, the maximum value of five. We have the x value, the vertex, which is the axis of symmetry. So that is a good characteristic to have. And we know that the parabola is just gonna open down from here. So if we draw a parabola that opens down, it's gonna look something like that. And then we're also told that there's an x-intercept at negative nine, which would be right over here, right? So this point here is gonna be negative nine and zero, like that. And so what we gotta do is we have to find the other x-intercept and we also have to find the y-intercept. So there's multiple ways to do this. Notice that this other x-intercept, we can actually get right away because we know the axis of symmetry, we know the other x-intercept, and we know that the axis of symmetry cuts it in half. It's in the middle of the x-intercept. So notice that the distance from negative nine to negative two is what? It's seven units. So if we add another seven units, negative two, plus seven would give us positive five. So we'd have five and zero right there. So the other x-intercept is actually gonna be at five and zero. You could see that from the diagram. Now, how can we get the y-intercept, which is this over here? Well, what we gotta do is we have to find the actual equation of this parabola. And because we're given the intercepts and we're also given the vertex, we can use either factored form or vertex form to find this equation. I'm gonna use factored form. Uh, so we'll have y equals a x minus m x minus n. So notice that this x-intercept of negative nine, what would be the factor? It would be x plus nine, right? We've done tons of questions where we're given the roots or the intercepts, then we have to get the factor. So hopefully you're pretty comfortable at this point knowing how to go from here to here. And then the x-intercept of five, the factor would be x minus five. And then what we can do is we can just plug in this other point, which is the vertex, negative two and five for x and y, solve for that a value. Another way you can go about it is you can use the vertex form. Now the vertex is at negative two and five, so we would know this is x plus two squared plus five, like that. And then you could plug in one of the intercepts for x and y and solve for the a value. And the a value you should get with both methods should be the same. I'm gonna stick 
to using the factored form though. That's usually my preferred way of doing it, but you can also do the vertex form and see if you get the same quadratic. So plugging in that negative two and five, so we'll have five equals uh, a negative two plus nine, uh, negative two minus five, like that. So we'd end up with what, seven, negative seven. So we'd have five equals negative 49a. And then we divide both sides by negative 49. And so the a value would be negative five over 49 like that, right? So that means that would be right over here. We'd have negative five over 49. And then notice we have the actual equation for this parabola here. And so now we can find this y-intercept. Notice that for the y-intercept, what's the x value gonna be? It's gonna be zero. And so then we just have to plug in zero for x here and solve for that y value. So if we do that, what would we get? Zero plus nine, zero minus five. So we'd end up with negative five over 49. Uh, nine times negative five would give us negative 45. Negative 45 times negative 5 would give us, what, um, 225. So we'd have 225 over 49. And then if you get the decimal of this, I think it's going to be around 4.6 approximately if you round it. I'm going to keep it as a fraction though, right? So that ends up being the y-intercept right there, 225 over 49 like that. All right, so we got the x-intercept we got the y-intercept. There's actually multiple ways to go about this question. So this is one way that I did it, but let's say that this other x-intercept, we didn't find it by noticing we have one x-intercept, we have the axis symmetry, so we could find the other because the spacing is the same. What you could have done as well, you could have with the information that we were given, so let's erase this, um, with the information that we were given, you can create a vertex form like that. You could plug in negative nine and zero to solve for the a value. Uh, this would be squared plus five, bring the five over, negative five, negative seven squared would be 49. And so notice we get that same a value of negative five over 49. And so this here would be the vertex form. And then if you wanna do it a longer way, you can expand everything and then factor this, right? So what you can do is you could go negative five over 49, x plus two squared would be x squared plus four x plus four. And then you'd have this plus five here. Then you'd have negative five over 49, x squared minus 20, over 49x uh, minus 20 over 49, like that, plus five. So this five is over uh, one. So if we multiply this by 49, multiply this by 49, we'd end up with uh, what here? We'd end up with 245 over 49. And so notice we'd end up with negative five over 49x squared minus 20 over 49x these two would end up being 225 over 49. And that makes sense. So this would be the standard form and it makes sense. Notice that we get that y-intercept right there. Same thing that we got the other way. And then if you factor this, you could take out the, you could take out a what? You could take out a negative five over 49 and you'd be left with x squared plus uh, 4x, right? And then 225 divided by negative five would give us negative uh, 45 like that. And then you could factor this over here. You'd end up with negative five over 49. This factors into x plus nine x minus five like that. And so notice we get those two intercepts of negative nine, which we already had, and x is equal to five. So that's another way you can go about it. I feel like that way is a little bit uh, tougher, takes a little bit longer. That's why drawing out these diagrams initially will help you see things potentially that you didn't see when you were reading it 
can just work. So draw a diagram and you can see, oh, we got the axis symmetry, we got the intercept here. Well, we can get that intercept really easily. We don't have to go through all this. Okay, but multiple ways to go about it. Whichever way you do go about it, the other x-intercept is five, the y-intercept is 225 over 49.